What's up? It's me again. I didn't go anywhere. Don't worry. Um, I wanted to, really quickly, because I have my stuff out, do a video on the new body tubing. It's probably not new. I don't know. I just, you know, I just got my hands on it, so it's new to me. But, quick thing about it. Um, so I already tied in my slop in. This is going to have quite a lot more bulk than this guy right here, which is actually pretty nice and bulky. But going to have a little bit more bulk. We're going to flare this bucktail out at about 90 degrees, as bulky as you can get. Um, and that's not done by reverse tying, but it's done by using this, right? Um, so I'm going to do a quick tutorial on it. Um, I cut these, let me see, I think they're about an inch and a half. Pretty close, inch and three quarters. Inch and a half to an inch and three quarters. That's about all you need. Um, so I just put this on, super glued it, switching up to a gel spun. Um, gonna lock that in place. Remember wedge, push to cut that off. Get that in the thread dam here. Uh, this first one is just straight tied back, and then the next two are gonna be reversed with this stuff, right? Um, and because I'm going for maximum length, I'm gonna tie in the full length of this chartreuse bucktail. Um, still not doing a lot. Still looking at less than pencils on these guys. So grabbing your bucktail butts, clearing that crap out of there. Don't need any of that. Got good length on this. Um, I added the slop in. <laughs> it's kind of, it's a little trashy. Um, but it's about two inches longer than those other hackles that I just used on this previous video here. Um, I think I'm probably going to title it just like simple pike fly or bucktail pike fly. Something like that. So if you go check out that video, these hackles are about two inches longer. But pushing on top, pinching on sides, looking at the distribution of my bucktail from the butt, bucktail butt's angle, making sure it's all evenly distributed, pinching it where it needs to go. Another wrap, support the hook, spin it around. Um, try not to do what I just did, which is I kind of like thumped on the thread straight pressure pulls seem to work a lot better um, if you kind of thump on it like that um, probably not with the 200 but if you were using like a GSP that's only 100 um, denier you have a tendency to cut through your material like especially deer hair I don't know if bucktails is as much as a problem but on deer hair you can cut the deer hair if you kind of jerk on it so just straight pulls we're gonna keep securing that on the butts until it stops rotating which is right there just clearing out around the hook bend and then we're going to pull the butts back, wrap in front of it, and half hitch to lock all that right where it is. Kind of doing a reverse of what I just did. I'm going to do a chartreuse body with a white head. Um, so that's the plan on this one. But the straight back kind of gives you the length, right? It kind of gives you length and it's going to give you taper because these next few stacks are going to be 90 degrees out from this. And I just lost one of my clips. Get out of there. So I'm going to cut these off. It's probably not super important. But I'm going to tie basically the base of that body tubing down on top of these bucktail butts. The nice thing about the body tubing is it basically makes your fly completely indestructible. That's a bonus. Not going to lie. Um, so we're going to come up into these butts and half hitch up into the butts because that's where we're going to secure this guy. So before I slide this body tubing on, you want to do one thing, you want to burn it. Um, and you're just looking for it to start beating, you don't want to do too much more than that. On this first one, it does not really matter just because you simply push it over everything. Um, stay up. Right, so we just beaded it, stopped it from unraveling. We're going to push it over and we're going to tie it down on top of these bucktail butts. But I'm going to throw some glue on there. Um, if you don't do glue, it kind of it can move. Obviously, we're going to do a series of these, so eventually it won't move. But just double security here. So taking my brush here, throwing some glue up on these butts. Butts, 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 bucktail butts, by the way. I'm talking about bucktail. 
I'm gonna take this guy, shove it over that bucktail. I'm gonna take our thread, lock that into place, a few securing wraps, and straight pulls down, and then I'm gonna throw a half hitch over that, and then I'm gonna hit that with this super glue and weld all that thread together. Remembering not to super glue your bobbin if you rotate your vise. So that's good to go. Now, we're going to push this over itself and if you start pushing before you super glue this, it can come unraveled or uh, before you burn this. If when you're burning this, if you just hold this to it, it'll all get beaded up together. And on this first one, it won't really matter, but on the next one, it's going to be very hard to turn over itself. Um, and you'll probably jab your finger into your hook like I do pretty often. So, a few ways around it when you burn it, basically, you're going to light this as soon as it beads, you're going to push it back. And so, you're trying to get like every other one or every third or three of them, the little small clusters to get beaded together. You don't want to bead the whole thing together or else you won't be able to use the material. So just get it to bead and then move it right away. Right? And that's going to stop it from unraveling and you just kind of opened it up and got like every other one to fuse together. And then we're going to fold this over itself, right? All the way over itself. And then you're going to bring it back forward and tie it in right on top of where you tied the base of this in. A little bit more. Right there. Four or five wraps, whatever. You don't got to do too much. Oh, I didn't want that. So this stuff is pretty slick. Actually, that's not an issue. Um, and so your thread has a tendency to slide around, um, which is why you should super glue probably a little bit sooner in that process, but it's not the end of the world. So we got that on there. Now that's glued. We're going to throw probably two or three more wraps over top of that that are just going to get welded on there. Pinch that off. Throw your thread down. Good to go. And then you're going to take this material and you're going to push it over itself. Right? So all everything you just did just got covered up so that a tooth can't get in there and break this apart. And it doesn't really matter that this is pushing on this bucktail because this bucktail is just on for length really um, and proportion so it's not a big deal. Now we're getting somewhere. That This was nothing. That's not the point of this material. Um, so the point is that instead of reverse tying to get bulk, you're going to use this to flare your bucktail. So you're not going to tie it in backwards. You're going to tie it in normal like this. But this has nothing to flare it out, right? So imagine you put your finger right here and flared it out. That's what this is going to do. So this is going to be known as a dam. A dam, a tubing dam, a dam, body material, body tubing, it's a dam. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a thread dam in front of it so that when we tie in the bucktail, the bucktail can't slide forward because of this pressure back here, right? We're going to force the bucktail to being flared out. So we're going to put the GSP back on the, back on the hook, get it in there good, and then you're going to build a thread dam like we did on the previous video for basically control of our proportion and you're going to build a thread dam in front of this so that when we tie in this bucktail it cannot slide in front of this so we're going to force it to get spread out right that's the idea that's the purpose so we're taking half a pencil three quarters of a pencil a pencil I don't know a healthy amount of bucktail, nothing too crazy. This gets a little technical. Actually, it's not too bad. I'm going to use pretty close to the full length of this. Because we used the full length on the back. So what you want to do, you're going to catch... You can hold your bucktail basically on, on your side of the hook, right? At about a 45 degree angle. And you can catch it, loose wrap, and make sure your thread is on the inside of that thread dam. You're going to do it two more times. And then just like we did before, you're going to switch bobbin hands to apply some pressure and you're going to use your thumb 
to force that thread inside that thread dam. And then instead of putting your thumb on top and on the sides to distribute this, you're going to take your thumb and you're just going to work it around away from you. So going, if you were going to look at this, you're going to go clockwise around the hook. And you're just going to work it around the hook as if it was going to spin. So you're going to basically manually spin the hair to get an even distribution. If you got to add another wrap, you can add another wrap. And then once it's all the way around, then you can put another wrap and literally just spin the hair. That needs to get something's a little loose in there. So I'm just going to put a few wraps and kind of hold the butts to stop it from spinning and secure it. And then I'm going to do another one and let it spin. Let it spin. And now that should be good to go, right? That's not going anywhere. Bring this through the butts. Give it three or four wraps forward. That was about five, whatever. Half hitch it, and good to go. So now you can see, right, this is forcing the bucktail out at a pretty steep angle. It's not quite 90 degrees because my thread dam wasn't super tight to that, but the next one's going to be super tight to it, right? So I'm trying to build proportions. So say this is like 70 degrees or 60 degrees or 45 degrees, whatever, it's going to slick back after a while in the water. But basically, the farther up you go, the more 90 towards 90 you want to get to build maximum bulk up in the front and it'll all slick back over time in the water and look really nice. So I'm just cleaning this up. I don't know if I'll finish this whole fly on video or not. But basically all you're going to do with most streamers is rinse and repeat, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing. We cleaned all that up. Throw some thread down. Get these butts caught in there. Um, I'm going to tie this one in a wee bit farther forward than the butts so that when I flare it over itself, it's not getting pushed up on there. Throw some super glue down. I really like this brushable zapper gap. It's awesome. I just hit my brush with it. Get out of there. Awesome, and it kind of clears like a UV, like it, it makes a super hard coat. It doesn't like, I don't know, like coat stuff instead of getting super soaked in, it just coats it so it protects it from teeth really well. Today's lawn mowing day, sorry about that, if that's pretty loud. Gonna burn this, beat it up. Right, this one doesn't really matter if it all gets uh, attached because we're gonna shove that just straight back. Stop mowing the lawn, I'm trying to video. Whatever. Whatever. Half hitch that. It's pretty hard um, with this GSP at that wide of a diameter to get your half hitches to hold. Just be aware of that. So use the weight of your bobbin to kind of add tension to that. That's why I reeled up and just let the bobbin sit there, right? So that's good to go. Now we're going to burn this, right? And then move it back right away. And it's kind of hot in your hand. You'll feel it a little bit. I wasn't very quick on that one. So you'll see quite a few of these are like uh, welded together, right? So if you can see this, like that's not going to come undone. And it's going to be really hard to push over top of that. So if you need to, you can just come in and break every other weld with your scissors. Um, but don't get carried away. Just open it up a wee bit. And now you're going to have to work this over itself and work it over your previous one which is why it's important that they don't get welded together because now it's a lot wider diameter than it was on the first one right bring that back get your bucktail out of there and tie that down now this so I don't I probably won't finish this fly just because it's going to be a long video but that's how you do the head right there Right? So just imagine one step further, and then you reverse this, and you can epoxy your eyes on there, cover it and clear it to your, um, do whatever you want to it. And it pushes water really nicely, kind of works like an action disc, like when you strip it, you'll see your fly like, hey, like pushing a lot of water, and then you'll stop it, and it'll kind of dodge off to a side or down or up. It's kind of got a nice random action to it. I like the T-bone. It's good stuff. 
So I'm going to weld this on here. Hit it with some glue. Getting a little sloppy with that brush. I got a lot of residue on this thing. Get your thread back on there and cut her off. Good to go. Gonna reverse this. And now that section is indestructible. All your threads covered. It's good to go. So just imagine me doing that one more time and then you can glue your eyes on here. For the quarter inch body tubing, which is about all I use, the half inch um, it tends to get in the way of your hook gap if you're not careful. If you were going to articulate the fly, say you did like hook and then a 40 millimeter shank, I would probably do quarter inch on the back, half inch in the front, and that'll build nice bulk in there. Because in the water, this is basically going to lay down um, on the strip. So the half inch just gets you a little bit more volume, so that'd build good taper if you're going to articulate this. And that way you could do it for the head and you'd have a nice big head. <coughs> Get out of here, dude. I'm trying to look cool in front of these people that probably aren't going to watch this. But on the quarter inch, um, about a seven millimeter eye looks pretty good on here, and you can epoxy it, and it'll give it a slight vertical profile with the epoxy. It won't be perfectly round. Um, and you can also change the shape of this. Like if you were to pinch it flat and then epoxy it with UV light or something like that. You can make like a sculpin head out of this or do whatever you want or create different things. And before this is over, because it's a shorter video, I like to use this stuff. Um, do I have that fly? I do have that fly. So this is an articulated wedge head, right? It's like, it's kind of like a Sid, an Andreas Anderson Sid. I kind of knocked it off a little bit. But basically what I did is I used this body tubing to create volume and the front hook right and it's a two out front hook so it doesn't really get in the way of the, the hook gap there's still a pretty decent hook gap and the the material is compressible so it's not going to like prevent fish from getting hooked but that's a cool way to do it put some volume in a trout fly so when you basically have water running over this this is the minimum diameter that the material is going to go And obviously water is denser and it'll slick that back a little bit better but it's a cool way to get uh, kind of artificial volume you don't have to put a lot of material on there and then the head is it's reverse tied craft fur and instead of putting a thread dam I clipped it back and then I spun a deer hair collar and used the deer hair to f uh, force the craft fur backwards so just a cool option wedge heads they're awesome it's kind of really hard to take a picture of actually so I didn't post this anywhere, but swim like crankbaits, good stuff. So probably the end of that. Probably the end of that. See you later. Check me out. Streamers by Gunner. www.bramerscustomflies. I don't know what it is. Check it out. Find me. I'll leave a link. See you. Bye.